Hello there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Today we're going to be looking at finite state machines. What are they? Why do you use them? And even how do you program one in a language like Python? Okay, if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so a finite state machine, FSM, is a machine that can be in exactly one of a finite number of states at any given time. So the finite in finite state machines, there is a finite number of states that don't grow, it's a fixed number, and you can only be in one state at a time. And that machine can change from one state to another in response to some kind of input, some kind of event. And the change from one state to another is called a transition. And you could actually say that you can define a finite state machine by a list of its states, the initial state it's in, and the inputs that trigger each uh, transition. And we'll see something like, like that when we come to do some Python code a little later on. So let's just break this down even to a simpler idea. Here I have a nice little picture of an unfortunately sad puppy. And we, of course, would like to make him a happy puppy. And so we want to translate from the uh, sad puppy state into the happy puppy state. And how do we do that? Well, we have to give the puppy a bone. And when you give the puppy a bone, it translates uh, transitions into the ha happy puppy state. Okay, you're not going to make a finite state machine about happy puppies, but that just shows you the idea. There is a state, you move to another state because something has happened. In this case, the dog received a bone. And you can draw that as a diagram, sad puppy, happy puppy, two states, and then this it shows the transition, and this is the input, what happened, the uh, puppy received a bone. Okay, let's talk about something that's more closer to real life, a traffic light. Now, a traffic light has a fixed set of states. You've got the red light, and then it goes red amber as it's about to change, and then it goes green. And then it stays at green for a while, and then it returns to amber, and then finally it returns to red. So we can actually draw that as a very, very simple uh, state machine. We go from red to red amber, from red amber to green, and green to amber, and then amber back to red, and round and round you go. And the transition here, what's triggering it in a very simple traffic light, is just time. So it stays at red for you know 60 seconds or whatever, goes to amber red for 10 seconds, then to green for 50 seconds and, and you know and so on and so on so time now of course there are other things happening if it's an, an intersection if there are multiple traffic lights if there's a pedestrian crossing this state uh, diagram can become more complicated but you can see there's a very very simple example of switching between one state and another based on the event of time now we can do that in python so here is some python code and we're using a class which i've called my f sm so my finite state state machine it's got uh, an initializer here just sets the the handlers uh, to to nothing, and then there's an add state uh, function call, and that needs to type in a name of the state and a function, a handler that will handle that state. It's very simple, basically. It says when you're in the state of red, call this function, and that's what it does. It sets up this uh, dictionary here using the name and the handler, and then when you run, you start in a starting state. And you can pass in some information and what you basically say is go and run the handler and the handler will return the new state you need to go into and anything that's happened to this cargo this data that you're passing around and then here i've defined it that if the new state is actually the state end then the program ends so there's a way out of that in a normal traffic light system you wouldn't do that of course you don't want it to end in the middle of the day you want that to keep on going around forever but for our program we have an end state and then to use it, this is what I was saying about how you define the uh, a finite state machine as its states and uh, the transition. So basically say add state start and you call the state start handler, add state red and you call the state red handler and so on and so on and so on. So there's basically a function for each one of these and then you run it and you say start in the start state. And in this case we're passing in three and the reason we're passing in three is because we just use that as a counter. When it decrements down to zero, we stop because I don't want my program just scrolling off the screen uh, forever and ever. Then the final bit of the puzzle is the state handlers. These are really simple. Look, the start state handler just says, go to red. 
and then the red handler prints red on the screen and says go to red amber. The red amber one prints red amber on the screen and says go to green. And that's obviously basically what it does. And here at the bottom, you can see the counter, that if we actually get the counter down to zero, we go to end rather than go to uh, red. So very, very simple finite state machine, not much happening, just goes through the different states one at a time. And if you ran that, uh, and all the code is available on my GitHub repository, if you ran that, you would get that red, red, amber, green, amber, red, red, amber, amber green, and it would do that three times and then, it, and then it stops. And that's how a very simple finite state machine works. Okay, let's look at a more complicated example. And um, here, what we're gonna do is we're going to see uh, if a floating point number that maybe a user has typed in and we've read from a file is actually a good number or not. And this is called a uh, data verification. We're not chain checking the range, for example. We're not checking to see whether it's in the allowable limits of whatever program we're writing. We're just checking that it is actually a good number. So some good numbers might be 3.1415, 0, 0.0, minus 17.929, just the 10 without a point and then a zero, just 10, minus 11, and so on. Bad numbers would be, well, minus minus 3.1415, that's not right, just the minus sign on its own, three dot without anything after it, and three dot one four Z. Well, Z is obviously not a, a valid digit to go inside of a number, so that would also cause an error. So how can we use a finite state machine to actually verify these numbers? Well, let's just start with some whole numbers. This is a pretty interesting and simple finite state machine. You have digits and you can say, if you have a zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine, then go back into the state digits. So look, if you have the number one, that works. If you have the number 19, one, nine, great. If you have the number 22, two, two. If we had a bad number like two, W, then the two would go around, then for the W, it would be an error state because W is not in our list of acceptable digits. So that would then show that the number is not uh, valid. Now let's throw in the uh, decimal point. So here we say you can keep going around all the digits until you get a dot. Then you go to another state, which is what is the mantissa, that's the technical name for the second part of a floating point number. And again, you go round with some digits. So 3.14153.1415, absolutely uh, wonderful. It still works without the dot. So three, seven, that works okay. And seven dot zero, that all works as well. So that is a very simple way of looking at uh, the uh, a finite state machine to look at uh, simple numbers. But it is a little bit more complicated because we have that minus sign, for example. So you can start with a minus. So if you start, if this is your starting state, digit or minus, then you can say if you have a minus or a digit, you go down to digits. Then you go around here in digits until you get to the dot. And then you go around in the mantis. So let's have a look. Minus 3.14. Well, minus takes us to here. Three, uh, uh, three in there, dot one, four, one, five, that works fine. Also without the minus sign, because if a digit or minus can accept a, a digit at the beginning, you get start here, three, then seven, dot zero. That works absolutely well as well. And then what happens if we had here minus and then seven? So all of those work uh, great as well. What happens if we've got some bad numbers? Do they fail our finite state machine? Let's have a look. Uh, minus, minus three, one, four, five. So minus takes us to there. Now we're in here. Can we have a minus? No, that's not in this lit here. So that's an error. Okay, 15, one takes us to here. Five takes us to here. Dot takes us to here. And then A. Well, A, B or C, none of those are in here. So this would be an error state now. Now what about just minus? Minus takes us to there. Ah that would seem to be valid. So now we've got a problem, we're gonna to have to fix this because we've got to a string that is uh, valid, uh, but actually it's not. What about three point? Well, we start here, three, dot, and then we end here. So again, that's not actually quite how we want it. So we're gonna to need to fix this just to make it a tad more complicated so that we can catch those error cases. Okay, so here is the final thing. Now, a couple of things to notice, first of all, if a state has an asterisk, a star, it means it's a good state that you can end in. Okay, and there are only two good states that we can end in here, second digit onwards 
and Mantissa. So if we start here at the start, and let's say we've got 3.1415, what do we go? Three, that takes us to here, and then uh, dot takes us to here, and then one takes us to the Mantissa one, and then four, one, five, we're back in Mantissa. Can we end here? Yes, great, that worked. Another example, zero, dot, zero. So we're up here, zero is good, dot up to here, zero down to here, end of the string, we're in this state, yes, that's good. Minus 17, 9.29, okay, so minus takes us to here, okay, so that's good, and then one will take us to here, the seven takes us back around here, the dot takes us up here, nine takes us to here, two, nine, we're in a state that we can end in, yes, that's great. A couple more examples, 10, one, zero, that's good, we're in this state here with an asterisk, we can end there, minus 11, minus one, one, we're in here, We everything's great. What about some error cases? Minus, minus 3.1415, so we're in start. Minus takes us to here. Now minus, error, because there is no minus in this transition here, so we're stuck, so that would be an error state. Well, that was good, we had that before. What about just the minus sign on its own? Well, if we go minus to here, and then it's the end of the string, oh, no asterisk, we can't end here. This is a bad state to end in, so that would be an error. Three dot, three takes us to here, and then dot takes us to here, end of string, oh dear, no asterisk here, we can't end, this is a bad ending state, that doesn't work, minus one dot, again we end up here, no asterisk, we can't finish there, and finally 3.14 T15, so we've got 3.14 T is obviously not part of that error state. So this state machine actually catches all of our good cases and bad cases and actually valid uh, verifies whether it's uh, a good number or not. So how would you do that in uh, Python? Well, all the code, as I said, is available on my uh, GitHub repository. Very quickly, we're going to use a named tuple, which basically means just two things together, tokens and next state. So that's basically the state is the next state and what tokens you can use to go from one state to the other. So we're defining these things here, which makes it really easy to use. And then when you add a state, you basically create this dictionary item, but there can be many things, many examples, because there are more than one way to get out of the state. So for example, from start, there's two ways to get out. You get out from the minus or you get out from the zero through two nine, or in this state, you can go out through the dot, or you can go out through zero through two nine. So there are multiple ways out of the state. So this way here, you've got the dictionary, and you can append this list of tokens and states onto it. And then basically in the run code, what you this is the key bit here, if token, that's the next letter that you're looking at, is in the list of tokens, then you change to the next state. And this for loop goes through the different lists of uh, tokens and states that we defined here by adding them on. It could be just be one long, for example, uh, in uh, this state here, after minus, there's only one valid way out, so that might only have one set of tokens in it, but other ones may have uh, multiple, so you have to have this loop to go through it. And basically, if you can transition to the next state, you're good. If you can't, so found is false, then you know you, you're in one of those states where uh, you, you've got a wrong, a wrong uh, token, and it's not valid to have a second minus sign, or, or whatever the problem was. And then you define the state machine. Now, this is really, really easy now that you can see how to use it. Look, Start, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero, takes me to second digit onward with a star. And if we go back to our original program, look at that star, zero, one, two, three, four, nine, takes into second digit onwards with a star. Okay, start can also go to minus. After minus can also go to second digit with a star. And basically this, if you look at it, is exactly what I defined inside of that um, inside of that state diagram. And the star in the state name is used by the Python program to say that if it's got the star in it, it's a good state to end. Okay, and so here's an example. I run the state machine on these examples, 3.14, minus seven, minus 22, and so on. Okay, and we can see whether they work. Well, let's have a look at the output. There we go. 3.14 is good. Minus seven is good. Minus 22.0 is good. Minus 22.0 is bad. Got a minus in the state after minus. So let's go back to our diagram here. We're in after minus, and we've got a minus sign, which is not part of that list. So it came up with an error, so that doesn't work. So let's go back here. Minus 22 point A, 
gone A in the state after dot, so that was no good. Minus one dot is bad because more is needed. More is needed means it didn't end in a state that had an asterisk in it, so there's something that's expecting more. So again, that didn't work. A minus is bad because more is needed. Okay, so as I said, all of that code is available on my GitHub, but I hope that you can see using Python uh, and you can define a state machine pretty easily to even do fairly complicated tasks like verifying the format here of a floating point number. Okay, so the question is for you, people, would you like to see more videos on finite state machines? Two ideas that I've got love to hear your comments do you want more examples in different languages so i've used python today would you like to see a similar thing in c or go or rust please tell me in the comments below and what about using finite state machines for game ai i know that's quite a popular topic so i could use a little uh, game library in python and we could write a little game that uses finite state machines to define the ai of the enemy if we want to be really adventurous, we could even go into Unity, maybe do a 2D game in Unity that kind of does uh, the same kind of thing. Please do let me know in the comments below, or there is the option, no more needed, thanks. I've understood finite state machines. I don't really need any more. Thanks for telling me that's all I wanted. Love to hear your comments so I know what to do in a following uh, video. Okay, that's it. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I really do. If you did, please do uh, give it a thumbs up. And if you like these kind of videos, if you like this one and you like these kind of videos, then subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification icon. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.